Hej alla sammen. Uh, jag heter Mosen. Jag är en PhD forskare på Software Engineering Group. Jag är inte förliten på norsk så jag uh, ska snacka på engelsk. Uh, today I will have a short talk about uh, architectural design decisions. Uh, to see what are uh, design decisions and why they are important. What are the ch challenge to make the decisions? And uh, what are the possible solutions? So uh, you are familiar with the typical software process, software development process, that usually it starts from the requirements. Uh, it is a problem domain, problem description. Uh, you should analyze the requirements. And then uh, you will go analyze the architectural significant aspects of the system, usually. And then you make the decisions about the architecture. Uh, for that, you will have some different candidates for the solutions. You will choose one. And then you evaluate your decisions. And then you see if you are happy with the uh, solution, you go further, or you will come back again. And it is iterative, usually, these days. So, uh, but what is this decision-making step? Uh, then I want to talk about that. Uh, if we go, uh, if we forget about software architecture and software engineering, we can see this decision-making generally in your life. For example, consider you want to go Easter somewhere. You want to book your flight, and then you go to a website and you have different alternatives with different airlines. But then what you have here is different quality. One of them is the cost. One of them is the amount of hours that you should spend in transition times. Uh, one of them is that, uh, for example, this flight is cheaper, but you should uh, go two days sooner, so you should have uh, more uh, vacation. Then you will have this trade-off between these qualities. And finally, based on your requirement and your prioritization, you will choose one of these candidates. So it is what you usually do in daily life for a different kind of problems. So you will have a problem statement and a different candidate and your needs and requirements. And then finally, you decide what is best for you. It, is, it can be about buying an... Uh, uh, camera, buying a mobile phone, then there are different alternatives and you want to choose. And uh, nowhere you can find a situation that you will say, yeah, this solution is the best and perfect and is really visible. So sometimes you have challenge for that, but usually not that much challenging in the daily life. But when it comes to the software and it, especially to the complex systems, maybe it would be a bit more challenging. So, but what is the challenge here? As I told that decision making is make a balance between your requirements and uh, a solution. And each solution has, is good in some of the requirements, some of the non-functional requirements, and is bad in some others. So you have a requirement versus the solutions that you should decide. But for the ticket example, for example, you are alone, so you have easier time. But for a software, you are not alone. Here is the architect. And then you have different stakeholders for software uh, development. You have the end user, the customers, the development manager, the project manager, the developers, maintainer. And each of them has different requirements. For uh, project management, of course, the cost is important. For uh, uh, architect, for example, maintainability is important. Maybe for uh, the system administrator, the usability is important. So for each of uh, these different people, some aspects are more important. And the problem is when uh, the requirements are conflicting. Uh, you, you have a solution that the security is better, but it is really bad in performance. For you, security is better, and for another person, performance is better. And then you should converge all of these to a one solution. And that's make the, uh, this process hard. Um, probably not for the simple software, like a simple website. That's easy. But when uh, I will show you now an example about a real example that we are facing now. 
Uh, and what, what are the possible solutions for make this task a bit easier? As, uh, like everything, you should not make uh, all the solution from scratch. You should reuse the already decision making uh, that has been made. Uh, so there are architectural patterns and styles that uh, Letizia will talk about them later, so I will not focus on them. So usually for, uh, it is not the first time you are facing this problem. Of course, a lot of other people that want to make a similar software has uh, faced that problem. So they have think about that and they have created some styles, some patterns, some standards, some uh, reference architecture. Uh, for example, if you want to create a software for telecommunication, there are a lot of ongoing research on telecommunication. They have created a lot of reference architecture and styles and then you can reuse them. And uh, there are some strategic way like uh, architectural trade-off uh, method or cost-benefit analysis method. That's really important to apply them in your project. And uh, Another important thing that usually even in industry they don't care about them is to document the tacit knowledge because uh, when you have uh, different stakeholders and you want to make the decision, usually the decision are made but they are not documented so it uh, will be in the architect's mind and if that architects go away from the company everything will go away. So it is really important to document the decision-making process and the rationale behind the decisions. And, uh, but even if you do all of these things, still it is a challenge. Uh, it is a challenging task and you should uh, always be careful about that and make it important in your project. So as I told, maybe in the simple software it is not really important, but in a complex software like Smart Grid that I'm talking about that now, is really important. Smart grid is a new generation of electrical grid. In electrical grid, usually you have a generation and then uh, they generate power electricity and send it out from transmission lines and then go to the distribution and then go to the customers. And now they are applying more and more software and artificial intelligent products to make it more smart and that's why they call it smart grid. And uh, if we look at uh, this part for the distrib distribution operations, there are different software that they should apply that into their daily operations, like uh, SCADA for mo monitoring and a metering system that uh, collect the data from homes. Maybe in Norway in 2018, they, they're going to launch it. And uh, MDMS uh, asset management, uh, distributed, uh, distributed uh, management system and different kind of software here they have. And uh, so wh what is the challenge here if you look at this different software? Not uh, any grid company will buy them from all of them from one vendor. So they go and buy different software from different vendors and then these different softwares they want to communicate to each other. So what they are talking these days, maybe you have heard, is service-oriented architecture, for example, that make it easier for software to interact with each other. And uh, w one of the styles in service-oriented architecture is using an enterprise service bus. And in that case, if you use it, and if you have an AMS software, for example, here, at advanced metering system, then it doesn't care that what uh, the asset management system is built on. Is it on C Sharp, it's in Java, and they can just easily replace them. And because this one just care to send a request to the bus and the bus will care about that. But it is easy to talk about that, but when you go to this reality, and this day I'm doing uh, interviews with the companies here, and uh, I'm asking, are you fully integrated all of your software, or are you using this architecture? And the answer is no, because uh, for example, uh, for the SCADA system, every second it needs a lot of transaction of the data. And if you put them in a bus, maybe the performance will be lower. And also if they expose it to the service oriented, the security will be lower. But what is the benefit then is that the maintainability will be higher. So here you will have a trade-off between different uh, quality attributes. 
So then they should decide if they should put SCADA in this picture or not, or the SCADA should communicate with NIS directly or via a bus. So here is an important architectural decision. And why it is important? Because in a company, in a big company, if they make a decision and they launch it, then later on it is really hard to change it. So they should be really careful about the good decisions here. And uh, of course they are using standards, but always it doesn't work because, uh, for example, SCADA in a lot of companies uh, is a really legacy system, is a really old system, it has its own culture. And if they want to renew it for the service oriented, it would be challenging. So that's why when you go to different companies, you see they have made different decisions. Not all companies are doing the same. Uh, because they have different uh, quality attributes. For some of them, the budget is really important, the security is really important, for some others, the performance is important. So there are different quality attributes in different companies and they make different decisions. Yep.